couple questions for you. Sure. Number one, what is the first chord you play when you pick up your guitar? Usually C. C, let me hear it. It's like... That's cool, that's refreshing, not even this. Yeah, well, fifth, sure. I mean, I don't, I don't know why, I think it's because like, the like there's that folky... Yeah, it's just such a warm thing, I don't know. That's cool, I like that. I think a lot of people will be really happy to hear that. Yeah, it's feel like piano would be obvious to play. See, I don't know why guitar starts that way for me, but it just, yeah. Because it's the first chord in your cage. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number two, what guitar are you playing? I, this is a an LG2, a Gibson. Oh yeah, see here we are with the numbers. Broken barrel bourbon's easier to say than LG2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, this is an LG2, and it was, um, Made in 1942 when, you know, the men were all fighting World War II and the, the, they called it the Gibson Girls. The women had to work in the labor That's force. Cool. So there was a bunch of women at the Gibson factory who made these guitars during the wartime. And How appropriate. I feel like I should have a Gibson Girl guitar. What? I messed up. Well, what's this? 1935. It's a Gibson Guy guitar. Gibson That's Guy. good. Oh, I mean, I love this guitar. This was also an accidental purchase at Old Style. Uh, Something that wasn't intended but happened, and I'm not sad about it. 35 was like the calm before the storm. Yeah. It was like after the depression, but before the after, war. It was after the like, prohibition, too, right? We were yeah. drinking then? Yeah. We were drinking Manhattans, maybe then? Probably. I'm almost done with mine. I have no idea what Manhattan was invented. I think I looked it up. Mike, do you know? I feel like it was like 1860 when a Manhattan was invented. Early 1870s. Early 1870s. We're drinking a beverage from the early 1870s. In 19, wait, what year are we? 2019. Like this particular one was made in 1870? Yeah, they actually, they've been saving it for us, and I thought frozen. today was the perfect <laughs> opportunity to drink this beverage. Um, was it from Manhattan? It was the Manhattan Club in New York City. Damn, in the 1870s. What's the first thing you play? Okay, um, my favorite chord is E6, that's why I keep playing it. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know if it's my favorite chord, but t right in this moment it is. Um, probably A major is what I've been into right now because I've been thinking about it because every time I pick up a guitar I want to go like I love all the like I've been into A major lately it's like the key of A major so I've been when I pick up the guitar I play A major I don't know why that happens you know do you ever get like like I used to be E flat which is weird because you try to in a part but like E flat was a vibe for a while I feel like guitar is like gra and there's gravity pulling it to you flat with all those like Hendrix it like sounds so good I to be flat. Love e flat. It's so good. Which is like people think that guitar players don't like playing in E flat, but I love E flat. And when you have a guitar tuned to E flat, I feel like it's like, oh, this is where it wants to be. Do you I'm ever not even. I don't. I don't. I feel like such a baby. Like I'm such. I only tune my guitars in standard, almost exclusively. I have one guitar that's tuned. Everything's like standard, but down a minor third, so like C sharp. I play it. I haven't played it in like two years. Guitar confession. Sure. Don't you feel guilty when you don't play your instruments, though? Yes. It's what like, do you do about it? Like, I'm thinking I need to hang up all my guitars, and that would make me play them, but I don't think that's true. I still am always going to pick up the guitar that I want to play the most, which is my 335. Yeah, I try to figure out the, if as professionals we trick ourselves into saying, that these are tools that I need for work, and that's just covering up for consumers. <laughs> Materials. I don't know like the answer. Which I love. I'm a consumer <laughs> yeah. of guitar instruments yeah. and clothing, so which I want more of. Yeah. I'm trying not to buy this year. That's like 2019 goals. So was there a, was there a song that made you love A major? <clears throat> okay. I think maybe I don't know what came first or second, but I wanted to look so you know the song you always heard the one you love? Yeah. So I only knew it from Blue Valentine, and, he, and Ryan Gosling sings it in this in a scene, and it's like, and then I so I was like on my Spotify Discover Weekly, and it came up, and now I get right now in this moment I can't remember who actually does it, but it's like an old standard, and I had no idea it was a standard. I thought it was just this like heartbreaking song Ryan Gosling sang, which is embarrassing because I went to jazz school and I like didn't know the song. You thought Ryan Gosling wrote it, and I was like, I love you, Ryan. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to play that song in a major. And I don't know what came first or second, but I feel like I've made an arrangement of that song while being in the world of A major, or maybe that song made me think that I should play in A major because it's just such a pretty key for the guitar. Sure. 
God, and if it had a color, what color would it be? Orange. Really? I was gonna say red. We're close. We're close, yeah. <laughs> That's the perfect pitch, kids. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I know. No, I love what you say. There's these experiences sometimes you go through that make you connect to a song. You know, we come from such a brainy way of learning songs, like getting inside the changes and learning yeah. at 12 keys. But sometimes you go live something and it makes you connect with a song so much and you, you need to you need to make the song sound good enough to to reflect your experience. And that, I think yeah. that can be so so much more valuable sometimes. You know? Totally. I, yeah, this makes me think of two things. Number one, I had this conversation with my brother and we were talking about distractions. And he was like, at a certain point, like, what's a distraction? Like, life is a distraction, but it also, like, informs your music. I was having this conversation with somebody that was is not a musician and it was like, when's the last day off you've had? And when it means day off, it's like, wake up and do nothing. You know, and it's sort of, I think as musicians, we don't really look at the fact that you work a ton and you travel a ton and then every day that you're not working you wake up and put like a four, five, six hour practice burden on yourself which is good to develop but it's sort of like well, when's the last time you just went to the ocean and didn't think and didn't put any guilt on yourself and just enjoy life God, us Jews, it's like the perfect oh, career, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, oh, good thing. I'm definitely not the ambassador of like good practice habits or anything. Which is why you need a great player probably. I hate when people say only they practice and I'm really scared. This is like my new thing. Like, I'm afraid I sound like I practice like I was just talking about with Rich. I don't think you do. Thank you. I think I, 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 think, I, I think I sound too much like I don't practice. <laughs> you don't. You sound but, killer. But um, no, I think like looking at it like a timeline has helped me instead of what did I accomplish today with mm -hmm. six hours of practice. It's more Am I doing things this month and this year yes. that are going to make my musical development push forward? But like, I think it's like, yeah, this year, if my ears grow and my I listen to more records, I learn more songs, and I see music, and it's like sort of slowly going in that direction. Yeah. Then I can at least start stop putting pressure on my little self to like the today. When is it okay to drink on a gig, and when is it not? Okay? Yes. Like you have this fantasy of drinking and playing guitar where you're like free and like it's awesome and you just like sound so good but it's not true like we're about to play and i'm not going to sound that good uh, what's your feelings on drinking on gigs i have very specific rules with it hell yeah if there's a computer on stage no mind altering because so, you're probably running the computer or like you know responsible if something happens to it drew does really important things that the world doesn't know. No, we don't need to. We don't need to, but just so the world knows, Drew is one of the most important people in the music industry. Oh my God. I can I just say that? It's kind of fun. You can say it's it. Fun I don't, to say. I, can I disagree? No, I think if there's a computer on stage that's putting out tracks. That like the whole world, because Drew's probably like music directing like something at the Grammys or like oh, on man. SNL or like some mega TV show and he's like running the computer. Or somebody is, and if it's, and you shouldn't mix alcohol with computers. I, I don't think you should. <laughs> I don't think you should. So if there's no computer, then I say tipsy is good. Okay, Especially, no computer, but like probably like a bar gig. Bar gig, or like a yeah, you're on tour and there's no no one's running tracks, then get a little tipsy and, and play. Yeah. Especially if the singer likes to get drunk. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to have a singer that's you know the whole band is getting drunk and then. No. It's, I guess it depends on the, it really is dependent on the gig. I feel like, yeah, I don't drink at all. I don't like to drink when I have a, a perf, like a serious performance. Yeah. Yeah, I, again, I, I do if there's no computer. Damn, I love this computer rule. It's like, it just, that fucks up everything. <laughs> I think I was at the gig you're talking about where you smoked. You're like, I smoked for the first time and I don't think I should again. It was at like Nick's house, Yeah, it was right? the first time I gigged on it. But I thought you sounded awesome. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, maybe I, maybe On that my, steel pedal. On the steel pedal. Well, so maybe I'll try it again on something important, more important than Steve. <laughs> I don't happens. know. Do I can't. On, do it on the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I remember having a lesson with Bruce Foreman like probably four years ago, three years, I don't know when it was. But we were talking about like why you had these amazing nights and it has so much to do with sound. Mm -hmm. Like if you show up and your tone's killer, if you just play like and it sounds amazing, everything else is amazing. That's very true. What is your feeling about this? I mean, I had an interesting moment recently that I um, was playing on a long night, it was like three hour night of music, the Hootenanny, which you've been to. And like I did a shitty guitar solo. 
And I was bummed. And I was like, in my head. Right, like, and no one else cares. And no one cares, but you know, in my head was this spiral of like, oh, these people are here, and they're here, and they, they're not going to respect me anymore. You know, the, the internal spiral. And then someone sang this like, beautiful song about like a death in their family. And I was like, oh, it, 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 it struck me that how like self-absorbed like, that whole like, oh my god. I shouldn't be laughing, but it's so true. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's like I'm, I'm sitting here sharing music with like all my friends and I'm worried about like my guitar. Oh, totally. Like how like ridiculous. Oh my god, it's absurd. Like, and, yeah. Yeah, so I think I've noticed when I'm able to escape is when I'm actually like connecting with my friends on stage. When I'm just like listening to the drummer, I'm like, wow, that groove is really cool. And yeah. I'm trying to, and I'm not thinking about you're just actually being with the people around you. It's so true. And that's when you can find those moments. For me. I know. Uh, I totally. I just re so I just recorded an album with my brother's band. Cool. And Sammy Miller and the Congregation. And uh, what's the what's the IG handle? We gotta. You know. uh, I think it's SM Congregation. There you go. Uh, but so we kept recording. We would record. Jay Belarus was helping out in the studio, so we would like record a song and like every time, like and it happened every time. It'd be so embarrassing. So we'd like walk in and be like, "Yeah, my solo wasn't good." And Jay, was, like, Jay would be like, "That's the tape," and we'd be like, "No, but my, my solo wasn't good." And he's yeah. like, "Uh, once again, like macro versus micro." He's like, "No, you have to look and listen to the whole song, not this like like how did I do?" Because no one cares yeah. about you, and I think it's a really important lesson. No one cares about you. I've learned that doing no, but <laughs> doing recording where like we're not editing takes together. Yeah. It's sort of like you have the to. The one mic. Yeah. I'm not here to plug that. I'm just no, saying that. No, but it's that, true because we did the one mic and you were like, I rem when I did one with you, you were like, like I remember who I forget who said what, but someone was like, no, I don't like that version. You're like, no, like the whole thing was great. Yeah, it's sort of like. What's more important here, if you get chills from the song yeah. and the singers, or like if you're like, stupid solo is good. Like, yeah, like no one like, cares about like your solo. Care. You don't want a perfect product. Sure. And I think the imperfections is what we're actually striving for. But it's hard when you're the, perf the person who is like providing the imperfections. You want to... We're going to play a song, and I'm so sorry that I've been talking for this long, and I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but let's play this song. You're playing the melody, or we're gonna go like ABA basically, right? ABA, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Alright. I wanna play. <laughs> okay. They're ready for us? Let's do it. So, we're, yeah, how do we talk for so long? It's for Drew's Gavin. Alright. Oh, that's great.
There's the E6. <laughs>